Welcome back into college game night. Brett Taylor joined by Kenny Koberstein, who needs no introduction. You know who else doesn't need any sort of introduction? The man you're about to see right now on your screen. It's KZI 9 sports reporter Nick Ursini joining us live in studio after a very long day on the field covering Oregon's win over Washington State. Nick, always glad to have you here on television. Austin Stadium seemed like it was rocking out there today. What was it just like being inside of the stadium with all those thousands of people in Oregon, of course, coming away with that win today. Yeah, I think it was 58,000 that Don Essex said was there. And, and honestly, it was a game that they needed to kind of just give every Oregon fan to kind of just take that big deep breath. It took a little bit of time for them to do it. It was a slow start to the offensive uh, you know, game plan there. It's funny, Kenny and I have talked a bit about this before, that Oregon seems to always start slow. I don't think they've scored an opening touchdown since the Colorado game. And for them to kind of come out and respond the way that they did, you know, they were only up three going into this, uh, going into halftime. And, uh, you know, they got the ball. They didn't do too much with it. So it was a game that, again, you, it was nice to see Bucky Irving do this. He did come back in this game late. He was a little injured. Here's head coach Dan Lanning on Bucky Irving. I don't know that anybody wants to, this team to be more successful than Bucky Irving, right? He cares about his team. He cares about his teammates. He loves hard. Um, this guy, is, you know, I, I won't go into detail about his backstory, but the adversity that this guy's faced for him to be the remarkable young man that he is, um, is really impressive. And, you know, it's, it's, I have three sons. I hope my sons can grow up and be like Bucky Irving. Both that you just simply just don't hear from many no. men say that about a specific person. And again, if you don't know Bucky's backstory, it's too much time to kind of go into it. But again, he really is the heart and soul of this team. And again, for him to have a good game that he did was really, really important for the Yeah, Bucks. it was really good to obviously see him come back on the field. Thankfully, he looked like he was okay. And of course, Nick, another big storyline for the Ducks in this win. is the D-line doing a really good job tonight containing Cameron Ward. That's something we've seen several teams struggle with throughout this season. How much of an impact do you think that had on Stalling Wazoo's offense, which we know in the air raid system can score at any moment and at any given time? Yeah, I thought it was interesting earlier this week. Brandon Dorless said that Cam Ward's the most annoying quarterback he's ever played against, considering Dorless has been in this league for a very long time. And look, this secondary, not only the secondary, they did play without Kyrie Jackson, but it was guys like Mateo Uyunga Lule who had good games. Evan Williams actually had a sack late in this game. Jeffrey Bassa, the big guys that really kind of came up and contained Cameron Ward. He had to be one-dimensional. I think it was 473 yards that he passed for. Of course, you know, that garbage touchdown at the end didn't really matter unless, of course, you were betting on the game. It was 19 and a half was the fate, was the spread, ended up being 14. So if you bet the if you bet it, Wazoo did end up covering. But again, this was a game that, you know, the secondary really contained Cameron Ward after, you know, what Michael Penix did to them last week. So definitely something that I know uh, Dan Lanning and Tosh Lupoy were very happy and pleased with. Yeah, Nick. Hey, so today, I mean, we got to see Iowa transfer Justin Jacobs uh, make his debut at linebacker for Oregon. Um, so just what did you see from him? What was his impact on the game? Because it looked like he was flying around. Speed. Yeah, he's fast. And again, he has been dealing with the lower body injury. So it was nice to finally see him get on the field. And it kind of gives guys like Jamal Hill, Jeffrey Bassa, and your guy Bryce Betcher a little bit of a break when, uh, you know, when you've got that much depth, you know, it's always that next man up mentality that coaches always praise. And for Dan especially, it's strength in numbers. That's one of his many sayings that he says. And, and this guy, again, you know, he's been on the shelf for six games and it didn't look like he missed a beat. Here's coach on his performance today. Yeah, some good, some bad. I think he'd tell you the same thing. Um, but the guy plays hard. He loves football. I'm glad to see him out there and healthy and competing. And he certainly makes us a better team when we can use him.